Hi, my name is Jerry Stitt, and I'm a, a, a watercolor painter. I've been doing it for probably 42 years, but I've been doing it full-time as an occupation for 35 years, yeah. And um, where I do my art is usually in my studio, and quite often I like to go out and paint on location. I have to say that uh, I, I enjoy teaching uh, as much as I do painting on my own. Um, and as far as I think that my teaching goes, uh, I travel all around the country. Probably one of the most interesting places I've been teaching classes was on the island of Cuba in Havana one time in 2002, yeah? And um, that was uh, quite an experience. I say that it was an experience because I, when I got down there, I fell on the stairs and I, I broke my knee into three places and I had to walk around Cuba with a 45-pound communist cast on my leg all the time. Anyway, as far as what motivates me is just probably the one thing that motivates most artists that I know, and that's light, the way the light hits anything, and that's what... I enjoy most is painting the light, and it's, but more than what motivates me mainly when I'm painting, I would have to say some, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what type of art do I do? Well, my, I, my answer is I'm, I'm, I'm a gestural, I'm a painter, but I'm a gestural painter. I don't paint what something is, I don't paint what it looks like, I paint what it's doing the gesture of it, and that's really inspiring to me. And as far as subject matter goes, I enjoy painting just a big variety of subject matter, from portraits to landscapes to marine paintings. Uh, and on the only thing I probably don't paint that I don't have any interest in is, and I love animals, but I don't paint animals. I mean, I've tried and they're, they're awfully hard. So I leave the cows in the tall grass and I let them I leave it to other people to paint them. And as far as any passion for any subject matter, I guess I have, is probably boats. I, I, I know boats really well. I, my brother and I have a large boat and uh, I've been, been around them all my life and I know, I know a lot about them. So anyway, I think artists should paint the things that, that move them, that turn them on, and the things that they, that they like more than anything else. And as a result of that, it, I would have to say that uh, when you're painting the things you like, you're going to paint them with a lot more conviction than you can anything that is just a mundane subject. So. I stress painting stuff that you really enjoy and you like. And um, I was going to say I have been fortunate to have been selected. I, I got on the cover of this uh, last year, this American Artist magazine called Watercolor. And I probably every artist that I know would probably give their firstborn to get on the cover of a magazine like this. but. Anyway, it was quite an honor, and uh, they gave me 10 pages in here, and they did one on, on me in this American Arts Watercolor Magazine in the year 2000, in the uh, fall issue, and they gave me 11 pages in here, and they sent out a writer to do a story on me, and, and this is what they said. They, they called me the grand, the grand gesture of Jerry Stitt. I'm, uh, and they gave me 11 pages in this magazine. I'm not going to bother to hold on, show you anymore, but uh, it's it's uh, what can I say? It's something in in what I do in watercolor painting. Actually, I paint in all mediums, but watercolor is my strength, I guess. And I would have to say that the newness of 
painting watercolor has not worn off after all these years. I still get as enthusiastic and excited about it as I did when I first started, believe me. This video is to introduce you to some of my artwork, and it's for sale, all for sale, on Montagio.com. This particular painting I, you're looking at right here <clears throat> is a painting I did recently down at a place called Fort Baker. It's, I, I live about five minutes away from the Golden Gate Bridge, and it's right down near the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, in Sausalito, rather. And uh, I like to paint on location a lot, and this is one I did down there. These old Victorian houses they had down there on the, uh, at the fort. And I would have to say, it probably, I don't, it only takes me, I'm a very fast painter, and it takes me maybe 45 minutes to do something like this. And I, have, I like to do a series, uh, a series of paintings, uh, variations on a theme, it's called, and I will do a series of ideas on the similar subject matter. And I'm going to show you the next one here. It's, again, a series of the, this is a larger painting, and this is also the same building but a different uh, size, and this is called a full sheet watercolor in it. And I usually don't take any, maybe up to one hour to do. It's actually what it really gets down to is one hour and 42 years, you know, in, in time. But uh, again, this is down at Fort Baker. What I liked about it, I love the, the Victorian house for one thing. I just love the way the light hits it. Uh, the three-quarter side lighting, you know, and it's a, it's, it's kind of a perspective nightmare because you got to really know how to draw from doing something like that. Other paintings that I have, this is a, about 15 minutes from my house. Are you getting a glare on that? No. And um, this is just a, I call it a, oh, uh, wetlands, yeah? And it's, it's over on the way to San Quentin. It's just about two blocks away from San Quentin Prison. Ah, and uh, it's a special place I like to go to paint. It's pretty, it's a lot of solitude, quiet, and not too many people go there. It's a small park. And I did this, again, in, as a demonstration painting for my classes, which you can find on montagio.com. And... Um, I'm going to show you a few other paintings in my studio here. Please don't paint what you see. No. So uh, I, I go down to there to the Golden Gate Bridge and I see the Lime Point Lighthouse. Uh -huh. And of course, you see that painting on the wall over there? Again, this, I'm just going to kind of explain some, the way that I start off my paintings. I, I go to a location and I will do what's called the thumbnail sketch in my sketchbook, as you can see. And this is particular, I like to title my paintings before I paint them so that I don't lose track of why I'm painting the painting. It's, it always keeps reminding me when I write the title of my painting before I paint it, where I'm going with it. So anyway, I start off with a thumbnail sketch and then I do a value study and a color study of it get an idea. It's, it's just like a, it's like a rehearsing for the main event. It's like a, you have to have a plan to start with. And this is my idea, my plan. And then I take it to the next level and I'll do another one here. And this is the same place, Line Point Lighthouse. And I've gotten very selective with, you know, uh, with the subject matter. It's, again, and where I was going with this one, I used something called a, a Velasquez palette. And a Velasquez palette is, he's a, one of the painters of the, of the um, oh, you know, he, he was a, a painter back in the early 1900s, late 1800s. Anyway, Velasquez used only three colors. He used yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. 
and he did use one other one that's black, but and he was an oil painter, but using that palette that I thought I thought I'd like to try Velasquez, a uh, Spanish painter, yeah, and he what we would result from using a limited palette like that was perfect color harmony. You can't go wrong and your color harmony is almost always going to be right on with those uh, three colors, a limited palette. So then after that, I like to do variations on a theme like I said, and I did this, I did another one, and this is the same place but uh, a different composition and what motivated me to do this one is my thought was see the Golden Gate Bridge is a cliche and cliches can get awful monotonous and boring because they've been done so many times almost the same way I like to take a cliche and paint it unlike one if you notice having known of the Golden Gate Bridge I've taken the bridge and I barely suggested it in here just a partial statement of it so that it didn't take over and command the attention if I had painted it orange in the way it is and dark it would upstage the reason I painted this one which is the line point lighthouse as I was talking about this painting what motivated me was to take a cliche and paint it unlike one and again if I if you painted it, I, I, well, let me just put it this way. I don't paint what I see, I just use it for inspiration. And I compose my own, my own way of seeing things. I either edit it or move it out or add to, but I always change what I'm looking at. But it, it mainly it's just, like I said, I just use what I'm out there seeing as inspiration for an idea that I have. Anyway, on this one, the painting is titled uh, The Line Point Lighthouse, which is underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. I got, I went out and painted it, it was shortly after 9-11, you know, and so in order to get out there, they had, you know, they had it all fenced up and, and patrolled for the re obvious reasons. So I'm talking, uh, the Coast Guard escorted me out there, and on the way out to the, oh, Line Point Lighthouse at the end of the pier there, about underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. The uh, Coast Guard guy, he was telling me a story about what happened to one, one early one morning in the fog. A big freighter came through underneath the Golden Gate on its way out, and in doing so, this big freighter in the fog, he took part of the rocks off with the ship, and he also knocked out the outhouse. And Coast Guard's uh, sense of humor was like this. He said he didn't think there was anybody in it at the time, but he wasn't sure. And we both laughed, like kind of patronizing with a laugh. But anyway, um, it, it was a nice guy, and, and I, I enjoyed doing the painting out there. But as you can see, how I changed things. I put the outhouse in, and after he told me that story, I thought it might make a good idea. Also, this this big cylinder on the right-hand side of this building here, it, it's a cylinder and it's a big bellows. And this big bellows that in that cylinder makes that foghorn sound in, in the fog for all of San Francisco. And you hear it all the time in the morning or at night whenever it's foggy. That's the, 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 the bellows for the big horn, I guess you'd call it of the fog sound. Um, so, and I do like to do variations on a theme. Like I said, I showed you all through my start and the other one and the Velasquez palette and this one. So on that note, I'll take you to another painting. By the way, you can get all these at, at uh, where's my paper go? Montagio. Montagio, yeah, Montagio.com. Uh, please deal with them because it takes the burden of business off of me and that's a good thing. So I'll show you another painting or two of different subject matter. Here's another one of my paintings of some figures. I was 
driving to the airport. My brother was driving me. We stopped at 19th Avenue in San Francisco at the San Francisco State University. And it was a cold, rainy day. And outside, waiting for the bus, were these three Chinese girls. And they, uh, it was inspiring to me. So I came home after I got back from my trip and painted them. And um, what I was going to say about this is that Again, I remember everything I've ever seen, so I can ha I can have total recall of all the stuff I've seen, and uh, and that's where I get my inspiration from. Um, I actually do prefer painting on location, going out on on site and painting on location, but um, you know it's weather permitting. It's I teach. I also teach in my studio here that I've been here for 25 years in Sausalito. And in, that's in California, and uh, I, have, I conduct classes two days a week here in my studio. And I also take assignments from different art groups around the country, and I go around and teach classes. I'm, next thing I'm scheduled for is San, the San Diego Watercolor Society. Is, I'm doing a class down there on plein air painting. And uh, also, there's a art store back in North Carolina, Boone, North Carolina, that most of you know, and that's Cheap Joe's. I'm doing a class there in next May for them. So I, I get out of my studio quite often to go around the country and do this. Um, and all of these things, all of these things I'm talking about, my paintings are for sale. and. Also, my classes, I, have, I conduct my classes here. And if you are interested in, in purchasing one of them or two, or maybe a half a dozen, or if you're interested in taking classes, you, you'd, I'd ask you to register for the classes and uh, look at my art or buy my art through Montaglio. Yeah? And they have this this website that I'm talking to you on and it uh, it takes what it does that I, I, I enjoy working with these people is because I'm not exactly is because I'd rather paint than do any of the business part of it but they're gonna handle the business part of it for me so uh, that's a big plus for me and uh, it frees me up to do a lot of things that I enjoy more than the business end of it so if you're interested in any of the stuff ring up Montaglio and and, uh, and they'll take care of you. Thank you very much and uh, I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>